You know, I've never quite understood the meaning of the term being an Uncle Tom. And recently I, I looked it up to find out what is the, the gap between the sympathetic character of Uncle Tom in the novel by Harriet Beecher Stowe and, and the meaning in popular, popular culture today, which seems to mean a traitor to your class, especially if you're a Black person. And the uh, commentary said that it was the it's the gap between the actual portrayal in the novel and the popular portrayal in plays and productions at the time uh, geared toward the general public, which had to be somewhat more cliche and modified to in order to appeal to popular taste and to sell tickets. Gets us the difference between uh, kind of the idea of your your person pers person being a person and your and your persona. Sometimes you need to be more of a more of an amplification of yourself, a cliche of yourself, if you want to appeal to people. It's it's similar to what I came across this week in the uh, idea of YouTube uh, algorithms, and that uh, videos often title their videos with sensational titles, which oftentimes are not even what they're about, but they're a way to attract audiences. It's similar, I guess, to the idea of many churches who have a a corporate entity or a corporate form. They they want to take advantage advantage of other mechanisms beyond the church. It's in this country we have the the separation of church and state, and you'd think there'd be enough intrinsic advantages to simply being a church, but apparently not. People apparently many churches are more interested in selling tickets than being a church. Welcome, welcome to Sunday Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith. At Sunday Coffee Hour, we talk about everything and nothing. This Sunday, we talked about. Chinese New Year, and how the population in China has decreased for the first time in many years, and that India will soon be overtaking China as the world's most populous nation. We also talked about now how they've approved smoking in Congress. The readings this week were from Isaiah, we have seen a great light, and from Corinthians, all are united in the same mind and purpose and that faith is a stumbling block and folly to others. The gospel was about the calling of Peter and Andrew and later James. The sermon at Washington National Cathedral was by Dana Corsello, and it was about discipleship. Dana talked about her, her hang-up with the word discipleship, and she said she much preferred the word apostle or even Christian as opposed to disciple. Dana said that um, when we fail to see that our salvation is inexorably tied and linked to the welfare of our neighbors, we do ourselves a great disservice. Dana said that often it's the most it's the most difficult people that have the most to to offer, and that sometimes relationships with the most difficult people can be the most authentic. I think in our small circle we we kind of got an inkling that of that lately or recently with the with the story of. Um, Monica Brown and her relationship with Susan Bogie at the end of this uh, this journey. It was the example of of two strong people and the manifestation of person and persona. They they say that um, you can't you can't you can't maintain a a persona for very long because often there's a there's a gap between who you really are and who you present to the world. I don't I don't think there's a very big gap uh, between the persona and person of of Susan, but in Monica's case, apparently there was there was something of a gap. They um, uh, I was reminded of the F. Scott Fitzgerald in The Great Gatsby. He talks about the idea that uh, in life, you know, um, there's only an accident when two bad drivers meet on the road, and that's especially true if we happen to be both those drivers. At St. James Cathedral this Sunday, the sermon was by Chris, the new minister for community outreach. And Chris shared that he, he doesn't have a clue where they're going or what's next. And he said, we're, we're kind of like the wise men. We're just following a star. And sometimes it's, it's more important to be fascinated with what we don't know than be fascinated with everything we do know. I was in a big hurry, as always, to uh, get to St. James in time, and I was rushing down the street, and about a block away from the church, I, I passed a man, and for whatever reason, I, I, turned, I turned around to say, say hello, and I was, I was warmly greeted. I had never seen this man before, but it, 
turned out he was Chris, <laughs> the man preaching at St. James this Sunday. This week, I was also caught in a, in a surprise hailstorm as I came out of the, the East Bank Club, and I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get home in this horrific storm? I asked a man there if this storm was going to stop anytime soon, and he took me by the shoulders and put me in front of a column underneath the portico and said, stay here and you will be safe. And then he went on to explain that that I was I was divine perfection, that anyone who tried to harm me would fail. I was I was a little startled by this. And then he he lit up a cigarette right in front of me. He was right. The the storm did let up and I was safe and I I hurried on my way and I I made a point of of not looking back because I didn't want to engage with this person any longer. But it was it was a startling a startling situation. None of us probably know where we're going or where to find the safe place. And sometimes we need someone to take us by the shoulders and, and put us in that place. I've had a long life experience with meeting up with many challenging people. And and Chris is right at um, St. James. And so is Dana that uh, we don't always know where we're going, but sometimes we can learn the most from the most difficult people. This week, I was also trying to track down the, the gap between this uh, concept of church and many churches being also a corporation. I, I don't quite see why that's necessary. I mean, to the best of my knowledge, Christ was not incorporated to receive more funding. And Christ was also not an algorithm to make a greater appeal people to people or to, or to sell tickets. In this week's reading, they also included the idea that we, we might not have the eloquence of words, but that's that's okay. We have we have all that's necessary. Plus, we have the cross. It's all foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us, we're being saved. It's the power of God. Details of the funeral of Monica Brown are are still pending. It's either going to be this coming Friday or Saturday, either at Fourth Presbyterian Church or at A. A. Rayner Funeral Home in the Chatham area. If you'd like to join us at Sunday Coffee Hour, Sunday Coffee Hour is every Sunday at 12 noon Central Time. I will include my email in the description of this video. I'll be happy to send you an invitation. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.